Many companies strive for brand loyalty only to fall on their collective faces. <laughs> Tonight, our speaker, Melanie Dipoli, is going to reveal the secret of achieving loyalty through brand experience. Now, Melanie has worked in radio, developed computer-based training for the Navy, has been a video producer and served as an adjunct professor teaching communication through multimedia. She is the author of three books. Her business is called Amagal. Melanie helps solopreneurs, nonprofits, and international companies develop their own brand experience to achieve loyalty, market share, and the profitability they deserve. Several of her clients have won best place to work and most innovative awards and have been featured in national magazines. Tonight, her presentation is Branding Beyond Marketing. Please welcome Melanie DePoli. Do you believe you have complete control over your brand? Many companies do. They assume that whatever they say, the market and their customers will blindly believe them. That would make marketing so easy. And tracking results would be a breeze. Some of these companies also assume the same to be true for their employees as if their employees don't already know their company's secrets. A company's success today is dependent upon three things. In a world of Facebook, Amazon, Twitter, and every other social media platform on the market, a company's success is dependent upon their ability to listen, to build relationships, and to adapt in a changing market. A brand is more than just a logo, creative marketing materials, and some catchy slogans. Your brand is actually alive. It's dynamic. It evolves and it changes, and it invokes feelings within your customers. In the last few years, the rules of marketing have completely changed. Traditional structures are crumbling. Leadership roles are converging. And the consumer's voice carries more weight today than it ever has in the past. If that's not enough, what customers value has also changed. No longer are price and quality their top priorities. People are smart. They really are. We have access to everything at the tips of our fingers. And we share our opinions and our feelings freely. This creates endless opportunities for brands to find out what customers like and what they don't like, what they want more of and what they want less of. How many of you have had a bad experience with an airline? <laughs> I think anybody who has flown more than once has had one. When you had that bad experience, did you tweet about it? Or did you post it on Facebook? Many people do. Hassan Saeed, a Chicago-based business owner, did just that. Only he took it one step further, and he paid Twitter $1,000 to promote that tweet. Four hours later, when British Airways responded to him, they apologized for the delay, not the incident, and informed him of their Twitter business hours being 9 to 5. <laughs> Since when does Twitter have business hours? <laughs> that clearly eludes me. Saeed has 400 Twitter followers. Because he paid to promote the tweet, he was able to reach an extra 50,000 Twitter users. On one hand, that may not sound like a lot, especially on a planet of billions of people. So 50,000 is not enough. His story was also picked up and featured in Time Magazine, the BBC, Mashable, and Business Insider, just to name a few. What would that do for your brand? 
David Packard, co-founder of HP, said it best when he said, marketing is just too important to be left to the marketing department. I completely agree. The marketing department can listen, but they can't hear every conversation. They also do not have the ability to fix every problem because they don't hear every conversation. So if active listening is a part of your company culture, then your company has the ability to leverage the power of listening. And the power is distributed throughout. And it does not reside solely within the marketing department. I once worked with a construction company that managed to capture the power of listening perfectly. For those of you who have survived a home remodel, you're familiar with the contractor runaround. They built their brand around the concept of you won't get the home improvement runaround with Capizzi Home Improvement. All of their employees were trained on this. All the systems and processes that were created were around minimizing the problems that are created in dealing with customers and dealing with the construction aspect to create the most positive experience as possible for the consumers. Customers today are choosing what brands to align themselves with. And they do so, and they pick the brands based on the image in which they wish to be seen. They crave relationship-based interactions. To them, it's not important anymore to just exchange money. They want to know that you matter to me. A great example of this is Morton Steakhouse. Some of you may be familiar with Peter Shankman. He's an international consultant and author. And what he did as he was getting on the plane is he sent a quick tweet out saying, hey, Mortons, would you mind delivering me a porterhouse when I get off the plane? Imagine his surprise when he got off that plane and saw a gentleman standing in front of him in a tuxedo presenting him with a porterhouse steak, shrimp, potatoes, bread, and the appropriate silverware to eat. That's a pretty amazing brand experience. Morton's took the extra initiative. They created a brand experience for Shankman. They created something he's not going to forget anytime soon. They showed their willingness to listen to their customers and their willingness to create a relationship. Shankman's flight was two and a half hours. In that two and a half hours, somebody at Morton's had to see the tweet. They had to get whatever appropriate permissions were needed. Somebody had to make the food. Somebody had to deliver the food 30 miles. And somebody had to figure out what flight he was on. <laughs> All in two and a half hours. That's pretty impressive. This is a brand experience. And as I just shared, it's the employees that make the experience happen. They bring the brand alive. They have the ability to create, to change, and to influence how a customer experiences your brand. Zappos is a legendary example of this. They send every new hire through seven weeks of training. And then at the end of that training, they offer to pay them to leave the company. <laughs> Once they start interacting with customers, they know the standard of the Zappos brand. They know what is expected of them to deliver upon that. An example of how Zappos delivers, a lady had some pretty severe foot surgery to the point that she could no longer wear all of the shoes that she had in her house. Her daughter ordered her six pairs of shoes from Zappos, hoping one of them would work. Her daughter then called Zappos and asked, how do I return these shoes? And explained why she was returning them. Two days later, 
this woman received a huge bouquet of flowers with a get well note from Zappos. This is brand experience, and it's your employees that bring the brand alive. When your brand comes alive, it then has the potential to create a movement. When your brand creates a movement, it can change not only customers' expectations about a product or a service, but it can change industry standards. A great example of this is Apple. When Apple launched the iPod, they changed music. They made music about personal expression. A few years later, when they launched the first iPhone, they changed the tech industry forever. Ever since then, no longer can a tech company release something that is not user friendly. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're the largest tech company in the world or a solopreneur with a tech business on the side. If your technology is not user friendly, you don't stand a chance. Today we talked about how a company needs to leverage listening, relationship building, and adap adapting to market change. <laughs> what will you do today to change your brand experience tomorrow?